All right, here on a service call on a York two and a half ton high efficiency heat pump, and our condensing unit is off. And when I walked up to it, I'm sorry that I didn't get the actual error code, but you'll just have to take my word for it that it is this one right here where my red LED was on, my green LED was flashing uh, five times, which means we have a high discharge line temperature, which means our compressor is getting too hot. It saw that too many times and it shut the unit down on the safety. Let's find out why. Okay, normally for something like this, we're gonna go ahead and gauge up and go full measure quick diagnostics, but just for the sake of teaching you guys about the non-invasive mode for heat pump heating and measure quick, I'm gonna first start off with the non-invasive mode. I guarantee you we're gonna fail that mode. Then we'll go ahead and go full uh, heating, heat pump mode and measure quick and then see what happens. Let's get the thermostat calling for heat. Return air probe needs to go in the return air grill. Supply air probe needs to go inside the supply register. Not laying on top, but it needs to go inside the register. We need a suction line temperature probe. This is your true suction, uh, not your vapor line, not your discharge line. This is the cold suction line. And we need to grab our liquid line temperature. Make sure that you remember to fill in the information and system information like tonnage, the type of refrigerant that you're using, and the type of expansion device. That way the information that MeasureQuick gives back to you is accurate. Also remember that MeasureQuick will need to know what your outdoor temperature is. You can look at your weather report currently. There's even a screen all the way over in the cloud icon in MeasureQuick that you can use to get your outdoor temperature. But the best way to enter that in is to actually measure it with a probe. Also, keep in mind that the pressure readings in non-invasive mode simply tell you what MeasureQuick predicts that the pressure should be based on the temperature inputs that you're giving it. It doesn't necessarily mean that's what the pressures actually are. Of course, you won't know what the pressures actually are unless you hook up your pressure probes, but we don't do that in non-invasive mode. So don't get fooled by thinking that these are what your pressures actually are running. You're not reading pressures, you're predicting pressures. So what you're looking for are your temperatures. Are they in the green? Or is there a problem? Are they in the blue or the red? And so that's really you need to be concentrating on when you're troubleshooting in non-invasive mode. Don't get hung up on the pressures because the pressures will probably look normal. Doesn't mean they actually are. Now notice how our suction and liquid temperature clamps are reading temperatures that are in the blue or in the red. Anytime you read something and it's not in the green, something is off. And so we know that our heat pump is not heating as well as it should be based on those readings alone. So if it's not in the green, investigate further. Approach temperature is definitely a good diagnostic tool to use in heat pump heating mode. If you have an approach temperature that is outside of the range of 3 to 17 degrees then you know something is off in this case we barely have any approach temperature so another indication that something is not right with this heat pump now take a look at your enthalpy and your temperature split notice that they're in the blue meaning that they're not high enough this is just another indicator that our heat pump is not performing the way it should so let's let the system settle out and we'll take a look at what measure quicks diagnostic is well, obviously, Measure Quick says that there is something wrong with this heat pump. It says that our liquid line temperature is at a range, our sensible heat output is definitely not right, and the system may be overcharged. So if you see something like this, go ahead and expand out those explanations and, and read them, and then you can use good judgment in determining what the next course of action would be. Usually when you fail a Measure Quick non-invasive mode test, it's time to gauge up and to go into full diagnosis mode, and that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so our non-invasive test is not looking good, so we're going to go ahead and put in our pressure probes, one at our true suction, the other one at our discharge line. Let's check that, the liquid line, and we're going to plug that into MeasureQuick and see what it says. Whoa, pressures look way different than what MeasureQuick predicted they should be in non-invasive mode. Our suction's too low, and our discharge, or our high side, is way too high. And notice our temperatures. Most of them are in the blue or in the red. So we definitely have a problem here. We're running too low of a suction, too high of a liquid line. That starts to narrow it down to what it might be. 
So in the diagnostic screen, MeasureQuick gives us a different set of diagnostics now that it is seeing our actual pressures. So it's important to realize that non-invasive mode, uh, the diagnostic screen is going to kind of get you started, but without those pressures, you really may not get the actual diagnosis. And as we see here, MeasureQuick is saying that we have some kind of problem in our liquid line, either a uh, pl plugged up liquid line, a restriction, or a faulty TXV. So that was a lot different than the original diagnosis that we may be overcharged. That's not the case at all, at least not yet. So we definitely have some kind of problem in the liquid line. I suspect the TXV, so let's look at that next. All right, so one of the faults that Measure Quick detected was a problem with the heating side expansion valve. Remember, we're in heating mode here. So we suspect that bulb is also charged. Uh, let's go ahead and take it off. We're going to strap it to the discharge line, actually, and see if we can get that thing to open up just to verify that uh, the TXV is the problem, that that's the restriction itself. So as you can see, our TXV bulb has been moved from our suction line to our discharge line. So it's very, very hot, about 185 degrees. And that heat is going to operate on whatever charge is left in that bulb and that power head which will hopefully drive this valve open. This is how we verify that the power head is bad, but the valve actually still works. And as you can see, that power head can be removed and replaced. So that saves us the trouble of sweating on a whole new valve. We can just change the power head. So if the valve moves, we'll see a rise in our suction. And that means that our power head has gone bad, but our valve is still working. We just need to get a new power head in there with a new charge, and we can get this unit up and going. So as you can see, our pressure did come up, son, meaning that that valve is working. It's just not getting enough pressure in the power head to drive it open. There's not enough pressure pushing against that spring. So that's a classic TXV bulb that has lost its charge, at least partially lost its charge. So we can replace this TXV bulb and get this unit back up and running. So measure quick non-invasive mode is great for checking a unit that has already been benchmarked and you're just verifying the performance of it. But if you're on a service call and there is a problem with that heat pump, then you want to use full diagnostics mode, which requires you to use the pressure probes so that measure quick has all the inputs it needs to give you the proper diagnosis. I hope this video has been helpful introducing you not only to measure quick's heat pump diagnostics mode, but also to the very helpful quick check that is the non-invasive of mode that's great for PMs and quick checks. Thanks for watching, comment below, and as always, stay safe.